All right. So the next thing we are going to step uh, on step up in complexity of uh, the optimization problem is if our model involves an ordinary differential equation. This is actually um, the the place where the original idea we can trace back to uh, of the adjoint uh, originated is when people are trying to solve control problems. That's way earlier than machine learning came along. Okay, so the control uh, the, the control problem can usually be described as following. I'm trying to minimize a j, which is usually a composition of two functions. The first function is the final state, which is u at a time t. So this usually tells uh, the, the nature of the control problem. I want to control the dynamical system so that I want to control a, a system so that at time t, the system reaches a certain desired state. And this JF describes how far am I deviating from that desired state. Right, for example, one classical problem is uh, in aerodynamics. I have an airplane that takes off from ground, and uh, at time t, let's say 10 minutes, I want to climb to as high as possible. How should I control my, uh, my maneuver, right, the climb rate? Etc. Uh, uh, so that I can reach as high as possible. Yeah. Question. Uh, right. So, uh, so that's that's an example, and uh, usually it's not a straight climb because uh, uh, at different altitude you have different density, different temperature. Your engine works at different levels of efficiency, and your drag, etc., also works differently at different speed. So, so this is uh, your final state. And also, another component is usually the control effort, right? So, so uh, maybe the control cares about how much effort or how much control authority you have to apply to this to to reach that state. So, uh, this is usually described as another integral of j control of u at time t dt. So this is the two components of this objective function, one relating to the final state, one relating to the time integral of what happens along the way. Then the, the uh, differential equation is du dt equal to f of u and s. So this s is your control. And s is actually a function of t. Okay, so that, that's because at any time you can do things differently, right? You are controlling the trajectory so that it uh, achieves a certain desired objective. So you want to minimize an objective function essentially uh, by changing an infinite dimensional design parameter. So that's your ST. So this problem, there is actually no way to solve it in the forward sense because uh, uh, because your your design is really infinite dimensional in some sense right so so I mean you, you can approximately solve it in the forward sense by discretizing s of t using a final number of grid points in time and solve it approximately but uh, uh, back then uh, this is really in the middle of the last century people developed uh, this algorithm uh, they, they actually want to solve it uh, exactly. So, so this is the uh, this is the setting, and uh, how do you how do you do it? How do you use the idea of backwards propagation to solve this kind of optimization problems? So the solution is the following. There is actually a natural extension, but that natural extension requires you to write the 
backward propagation algorithm in a slightly different way. Okay, so let's in order to for us to be able to solve that problem, let's actually look backwards through the backward propagation algorithm and cast it in a, in a different light. So in our backward propagation algorithm, we wrote our objective function u of j of u n. Uh, and in the derivation of the derivatives, what we can do is we can define our j to be j of u n plus a set of Lagrange multipliers. So for example, we can add this to u hat of n times u n minus u n as a function of u n minus 1 and s. And if u n is a vector, this needs to be transposed. So why is it appropriate to add that term? This is because I can view the evolution from u n minus 1 to u n as a constraint. And that constraint is satisfied, which means the parentheses would be exactly equal to yeah. 0 once that constraint is satisfied. So I'm adding something that I know is 0, no matter what that u hat n is. Right? OK. Then I'm going to keep adding u hat of n minus 1 transpose times u n minus 1 minus u n minus 1 as a function of u n minus 2 and s etc and uh, all the way to u hat zero transpose times u zero minus u zero as a function of s right yes so in this case your n depends on what you choose for your time step my n depends on yeah so so this is a uh, uh, that's right. So if if this is a discretization of the differential equation, then my n actually depends on what I choose for time step. Yes. So then increasing, like you keep refining your time step would increase the cost both in solving the differential equation and you'll have more uh, the multiplier. That's right. That's right. So usually computing the gradient using backward propagation has a similar computation cost as solving the forward problem. And uh, I say similar, it's the same order of magnitude. It depends on what the operation is exactly. If the operation is a complex but explicit operation, usually the adjoint is a little bit more expensive. If the operation, we're going to see a little bit later, if the operation is an implicit, involves an implicit operation, that may require Newton's method, then the adjoint is usually a little bit cheaper than the forward simulation. So it, it, it depends. So, uh, so, this is the, so this is my new objective function. 